Hi guys, today we are gonna talk about spirometry, which is a way that you can measure lung capacity. So spirometry breaks down into spire, which means breathe, and metry, which means measure. And I'm gonna show you through a series of steps how to make and interpret a spirometry graph. In order to do this, you're gonna need a place to draw your graph, uh, some different colors. I recommend six different colored pencils to do this or markers and a pen and a ruler also helps out. Go ahead and start by drawing the X and Y axis of your graph. If you have a ruler, use that so you can make straighter lines. When we do spirometry, we're measuring over a period of time in seconds, so that goes on our X axis. And what we're measuring is the volume that's either being inhaled or exhaled at any given time. You'll notice I'm not actually putting units on these because we're just going to be very general in the shapes and the parts of the graph today. Go ahead and pause this while you draw your own graph. The next thing to add to your graph is these curves, and the curves represent breathing. So when you breathe into a spirometer, it's going to record it just like this. When you see the curve going up, it means you're inhaling, so you're taking air in, and as it comes down, you're exhaling. Inhaling, exhaling. And what you can see here is this is a much bigger inhale, which is why it goes up higher, and this is a bigger exhale, which is why it goes down lower. And then we have a normal breath again. So what this graph represents is three normal breaths, and then a huge inhale, a huge exhale, and then one more normal breath. Go ahead and pause the video while you draw this curve. Now go ahead and take a normal breath in. Try not to think about it. I know it's hard because as soon as you start thinking about breathing, it's hard to let it be involuntary. The voluntary part of your brain starts to take over. But this curve right here represents just that normal breath in and out. A normal breath in and out where you're not trying especially hard is known as tidal volume. You're actually using a very small amount of your lung capacity when you're not exercising or making an effort to breathe hard. So you want to draw an arrow, label that tidal volume, TV, and make a note that this is the volume that we inhale or exhale when we're not trying especially hard. So without conscious effort, this is a normal breath in and out. The next part of our graph we're going to label is what's called the inspiratory reserve volume. And that goes from the top of a normal peak, a tidal volume peak, to the top of your highest peak where you took the biggest breath that you could take. So I think the word inspiratory is really cool. If you think about um, what spire means, spire means to breathe. To inspire means to breathe in. And so when we say someone is inspired, literally if you're inspired, you might kind of gasp like, <gasps> and so inspiratory means we're breathing in. We can actually breathe in much more than we usually do if we think about it. So take Take a normal breath and then take the biggest breath in you can. Take in as much air as you possibly can. And when you think you can't take any more, take just a little bit more. And that's called your inspiratory reserve volume. It's like a reserve because if you really want to, you can do it. So I defined it as how much more we can inhale with effort. It's not the total amount we can inhale. It's the total amount minus how much we usually inhale. The next one to record is your expiratory reserve volume. So again, think about the word. Think about what it means to expire. If food expires, it can't be used anymore. And we even say that a human expired um, when they died. It's like a euphemism. So expire means to breathe out. And literally the, the reason we use that to talk about someone dying is your last breath out is when you die. So expiratory means this person has breathed out. It's just like the inspiratory reserve volume. When you take a breath, you breathe out. But if you try hard, you can breathe out a lot more. So take the biggest breath in you can and then push out as much air as you can. That's what's happening in this graph. So take a breath and do a normal breath out. And then once you've breathed out, push as much more as you can. <sighs> really make an effort. 
it takes some strain. And that difference between a normal low dip and the lowest low dip is your expiratory reserve volume. The next thing to label is called vital capacity. Vital means life. So this is basically our whole capacity that we can breathe in and out with effort. So when you take your biggest breath in and your biggest breath out from the top of this peak to the bottom of this valley is your vital capacity. Another way to think of it is it's your tidal volume, a normal little breath, plus the biggest breath in that you can take and the biggest breath out that you can take. So all those things together will always equal your vital capacity. The next part of your graph is called residual volume. Residual means leftover. If you push out the biggest breath you possibly can, your lungs are not empty. They're never completely flat. So even when we push out as much as we can, there's still about a liter of air in there, a liter and a half of air, um, that can't come out with as much muscle as we can put into it. That's known as the residual volume. We have to just estimate the amount of residual volume. The only way to really get it out is to flatten a person with something like a roller. So while you are alive, that residual volume is always going to be inside of you. The final thing to add to your graph is total lung capacity. You'll notice that I added some dotted lines just to show where these arrows line up. I would suggest that you do the same thing. Total lung capacity can't be measured directly because remember residual volume can't be measured directly. But with a spirometer, we can measure everything else. So we can do our tidal volume, our inspiratory and expiratory reserve, and our vital capacity. And then we use a set value for residual volume. And if we add our vital capacity that can be measured to that residual volume we know is trapped in the lungs, we get a number called our total lung capacity. And your total lung capacity is going to vary based on your sex, your age, your level of physical activity, but this is the kind of thing that a pulmonologist could look at in order to determine if you have a normal lung capacity. Here's my finished graph. My final step was to color in the different waves to show which parts of the graph they represent. I hope this helps you understand spirometry and how we measure lung capacity. If you have any questions at all, just drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.